How's it going y'all? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood med student, and today is a very, very special day because I'm going to be going to see Black Panther Wakanda Forever, uh, and I'm very, very excited. Uh, the reason why, um, I'm gonna go, obviously, because it's a great movie. I love the first Black Panther. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. But the thing is that there's a local uh, trans rights organization here called Transforming, specifically for uh, trans masculine people of color. And I've been doing a uh, vaccine campaign for them for the past couple of months, and it's going to extend till the end of April. If you haven't been on my Instagram, I've been posting that vaccine campaign on there. But um, they are paying for a bunch of trans guys of color to go see this movie for free, and I got invited. So, um, specifically, um, they're, they're a great organization for um, black trans men and black trans, um, trans masculine non-binary people. So I highly check it out if you're in Atlanta and you fit that demographic. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited to see this movie. But before that, I got to do a little bit of chores. I got about an hour and 20 minutes before I have to get ready. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so laundry and vacuuming is done. I have about 20 minutes before I need to get ready for uh, the showing and I want to dress pretty cute. Uh, but I want to cut up this meat that I got on sale. I got two big chunks of flank steak uh, the other day from Kroger on special. So I want to make some Chinese, bar Chinese and um, Asian barbecue with them. So I went to the farmer's market yesterday and I'm so excited to try these spicy seasonings out. There's this traditional um, Chinese barbecue seasoning that I'm gonna put on one of the steaks and marinate that overnight for uh, Chinese barbecue. Uh, and then I got this one, it's called Fly by Jing Malay Spice Mix. And it looks like it's going to be delicious. And I love that in the description, they have some really funny, uh, <laughs> funny um, messages. So. In here it says this jar contains one hour of wide-eyed surprise, 15 meals that impresses mom, eight white shirts stained with chili oil, 21 meh meals turned into mmm meals, uh, 15 friends saying this is so good, what is it? <laughs> um, 10,000 tingling taste buds, 64 garbled words spoken with food in the mouth, um, five hours of comfort, and 28 wide-eyed grins when it tastes so good on that too. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really excited to try this. Um, they were kind of pricey, so I hope next, tomorrow when I cook these up, they taste delicious. So one thing, so one thing I really hate is um, taking these pieces of meat out of their packaging when they're packaged like this. And when it comes to ribeyes and stuff, I usually have to tear it like that. It takes forever, I hate doing that. But something that I learned is that if you have a really sharp knife, um, I have this German knife that I bought a couple of years ago. It's fantastic and then I sharpen it monthly with a whetstone So it's always pretty sharp. So what I do and I, and I end up actually cutting through the plastic in this end So it allows me to get the meat out really quickly a little bit of a trigger warning I guess if you're ske squeamish with meat being cut or blood you're gonna be seeing that for the next couple of minutes So I advise you to skip this part if you don't like that, but essentially what I do is I just cut through the plastic Perfect, and then I can just pull the meat out pretty easily from that. And there's one piece of flank. Let's cut through. Put that over there, and then I can just pull this meat out on the sink. Now the meat is out of the package and now I'm just gonna cut it up. Some parts are still a little frozen because I froze them, froze them after I got them from the shop, but that's fine. It actually makes it easier to cut with a knife, with a knife if I do that. My cat is meowing because he wants some of this, but he doesn't even like red meat that much. He usually just goes crazy for chicken. He begs for red meat and then I give him some and then he's like, nah, I don't want it. So. I'm not being cruel, I promise. Okay, so I got two very beautiful bowls of flank steak cut. 
one is got one is gonna get the mala seasoning and the other one's gonna get the chinese barbecue seasoning i think i'm gonna use the mala seasoning on this one actually <laughs> um and then i'm going to add some extra stuff to to the marinade such as ginger garlic paste i'm gonna add a little bit more of cumin some msg because you know i love me some good msg in my chinese food and my asian food in general i honestly add msg to everything um not too much but just enough for a little bit of a flavor and umami and yeah i'm gonna season it up and um it'll be ready for the uh fridge for 24 hours okay i just opened up the jars for the two seasoning uh barbecue seasonings and i want to get an initial reaction uh oh this one is friggin i can smell it from here already this is the mala one Oh my god, it smells really good. Oh, I'm so excited to try it. I've never had real like mala barbecue before, but I first tasted mala seasoning in these Lay's International Potato Chips, what that was supposed to taste like, mala barbecue. And I really liked it, so I think it'll taste really good on this meat. Oh my god, it is so fragrant. Like, oh. Oh. Mmm, it's so good. Mmm. Oh, it's a product of Sichuan, China, apparently. Uh, and this is the regular uh, Chinese barbecue seasoning. Not as fragrant as the mala one. Or like spicy, is what I'll say. But it does have a... It has kind of like a peanut sesame. Oh, that's interesting. On the ingredients, there's this peanuts and sesame in it. I'm going to take a little taste of this. Mmm, and this one is definitely less on the spicy side, but more of the umami and like flavorfulness. So what I think I'm going to do with this one, I do like a little kick to my stuff, is that I'm going to add Sichuan peppercorns and red chili flakes to the seasoning in addition to what I have for the marinade, just to give it a little bit of a kick. Okay, meat is properly marinated and they look delicious. I'm so excited to try them tomorrow. I'm gonna pop them in the freezer and um, gonna go get ready for for the movie. Okay, I'm all ready and set to go to the movie. I'm dressed up, you know, I got my Black Panther casual look and I decided to go with uh, the cologne Afnan Supremacy Incense as my signature for today's scent, just because it has that smoky mysteriousness, but also like edginess that I would see the Black Panther wearing, regardless of the Black Panther's gender. Okay, y'all, the movie was amazing, but I can't find my car. Like, this parking lot is huge, and like, the way they numbered the aisles is very confusing, so I can't find my car, so let's pray for me. I've been walking around for like 10 minutes now. All right, <laughs> that was uh, that was interesting. It took me like 30 minutes to find my car because apparently this place, Atlantic Station, where the theater is, the way they letter the, um, the aisles is completely different. It's not in alphabetical order. It's not like, a, it's, it's not, it doesn't go from A, A through Z. Like, they're all over the place. So I memorized that it was P1J, but there were four separate places here that's P1J. I had to memorize the row number, which I didn't. I did not, I didn't write that down. So it took me 30 minutes to find my car, which was crazy. Um, but that was a super, super, super good movie. I highly recommend it. Black Panther 1 is obviously going to be my near and dear to my heart, but I think they did an incredible tribute to Chadwick Boseman. I think they took the plot and made it very interesting. The action scenes were super good. Um, the handoff to Letitia Wright as the new Black Panther was amazingly done and the ending was absolutely beautiful. The whole movie paid, paid such an homage to the death of, to the passing of Chadwick Boseman and um, I know, I hope uh, he's remembered in our hearts forever. It was, I, I can't say enough about this movie, don't want to reveal too much or give any spoilers, but um, yeah, there were points that I almost cried but I didn't because I was with a group of new people. And I wanted to show you, I got a bunch of goodies from Transforming, so I highly recommend uh, being a part of this group if you are a trans masculine person of color. They're called Transforming, they're based in Atlanta, they do a lot of events here, and right now I'm doing a vaccination campaign with them. But um, for coming, for showing up, they gave me these masks. So cute. Um, it says, take your shot, COVID shot with the basketball. 
and I also got a Visa gift card, so I'm super excited uh, <laughs> to use it. I'm finally home. Whew, what a day, but that was so, so fun. It's so, so healing, and I don't know, there's just something in my heart that feels super satisfied today because, you know, um, I'm a pretty young trans guy. I'm 26 years old. I've only been on T for four years. So I'm in like mid to late 20s, and a lot of the guys that I met today, they, um, you know, they're older. They've been on T for over a decade. They've been transitioning for over a decade. A lot of them have wives. A lot of them have partners. A lot of them have been with someone else for more than a couple of years together. So it was just nice seeing, it's kind of like seeing like the people that you look up to, like your dad. <laughs> so that was really nice and got to talk to them, got to know these people. I, I highly recommend this group. It's so sad that like, because of how busy I am, not able to be a part of community as I am, but that's that's a whole 10 minute video for another day. Um, but overall, I just feel so warm and fuzzy inside. Besides the fact that I got uh, stranded for 30 minutes in the parking garage, parking garage, overall, it was a pretty awesome day. And um, I wanna end this off by saying that like, um, this week I found out that I was registered for the draft without knowing that I was registered for the draft. And the way I even found out was by happenstance because um, if y'all have been following me on social media, I recently started changing my legal documents to match my gender identity in the last couple of months. I think the first thing I changed was um, my, my ID in July. And then around August, September, I changed my passport and now I changed my citizenship naturalization form. But uh, this week I got this form from one of the uh, schools that I'm interviewing at to fill out. And part of that form requires me to sign that I registered for the draft because part of that experience is at the Veterans Affairs. And if you are uh, someone who works at the VA, you have to have registered for the draft. Which started making me freak out a little bit because I got most of my legal documents changed after 26 and you can't register for the draft after 26. So I was like, oh my God, am I going to be barred from working at Veterans Affairs Associations, which is like 75% of residency programs. So I was freaking out. And before I signed the document, you know, I have to get verification of whether or not I was registered for the draft. So I went onto the draft website to see if I could register. And when I input my name, my name was already registered in um, July of this year. And I was like, how did that happen? Well, it turns out uh, around the same time, same date actually that I got my ID changed, they also registered me for the draft. And I had no idea that they did that. So <laughs> um, it ended up being a, um, a weight off my shoulders because I didn't have to go through a bunch of government loops because I have to get like, if, if I didn't register for the draft by 26, I had to get some government exemption form, turn it in, blah, 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 all that stuff. But because they non-consensually <laughs> registered me for the draft, I don't have to have that problem anymore. Although, not the best way to find out that the, gov uh, that the government just decided to enlist me into the military and call me in whenever they need me. So that was interesting. But I guess I'm getting the same treatment as all men in this country where we have to sign our right rights away uh, to fight for a cause that we probably didn't start. Anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed following me throughout this day. I hope uh, you got something out of it. And I hope that you show up for later vlogs and show up for my future videos and follow me on Instagram to keep up with my activism and daily life work. And I'll see y'all in the next vlog, next video, whatever. Mwah. This is Ben.